This video will calculate the angular momentum of the Earth once for the Earth's uh, angular momentum while it's in orbit around the Sun, and secondly, the angular momentum of the Earth just due to spinning on its axis. Well, angular momentum is calculated by rotational inertia times the angular velocity. We want the angular momentum of the Earth in its orbit. It takes, uh, we'll just round this off, 365 days. It's actually 365.25. Uh, days for one orbit of the Sun, but let's use 365. Uh, actually, no, I'm using uh, 365.25 because I obtained the number of seconds in a year from our conversion table, and I'm, I'm pretty positive that includes the extra quarter day. Uh, so, omega will be one rotation, or sorry, one revolution as the Earth uh, revolves around the Sun. One revolution is 2 pi radians. We want to use 2 pi, not 360 degrees. This formula requires you to use radians per second for the omega. So we have 2 pi radians for one year. And the, as I say, that conversion chart, the easy way to get the number of seconds, just refer to a conversion table. So 3.16, 10 to the seventh seconds in a year. Dividing 2 pi by the number of seconds in a year, we find omega is 1.99 times 10 to the minus 7 radians per second. The next question is, what is the value of I? Our Earth is a sphere, but it's a small sphere. And we're going to say that it's just a point uh, in terms of uh, the distance to the sun. That's not exactly true, but just a we're going to use just the center of gravity of the Earth at this distance. We're going to assume the Earth's motion is a circle. That's not quite true either. But uh, for purposes of illustration of a calculation, it works. So the radius of our circle, 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters, 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters, and we can now calculate the rotational inertia. For just a single point going around the axis, we have mr squared as the formula. It would be wrong to use 1 half mr squared. That's the formula for a filled in disk. Um, and for the case of the Sun and the Earth, the Earth does not extend all the way to the Sun and across. So mr squared, a point mass traveling at some radius r away from the axis. Putting in the mass of the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Putting in the uh, value for the radius, and I hope I squared this. It looks like I did. I just probably just didn't write the square here. Um, the mr squared. I'm just uh, kind of roughly computing here. So this would be 6 times 1.4, 1 1.5. So that just gets us over the uh, um, uh, the 1 mark. And then another 1.5 brings us up to the 1.3. And looking at the powers, 24, this will be 22 when we square this. So it looks like I'm okay. I've, I didn't write the square here, but on my calculator I did the square. So here's the rotational inertia for the Earth in its orbit. 1.34 times 10 to the 47th. And you should double check that. I'll double check it later as well. Um, so angular momentum, we have a value for the uh, rotational inertia. 1.34, 10 to the 47th kilograms meter squared or in standard metric units. The omega, 1.99 times 10 to the minus 7 in standard units, radians per second. Multiplying those together, we come up with 2.66 times 10 to the 40th kilograms meter squared per second. So we've discovered the uh, angular momentum when we're in orbit as the uh, Earth is moving around as a point around the, the sun. And now the second part of the question is, how much angular momentum does the Earth have just to due to its spinning on its axis? Well, again, angular momentum is rotational inertia times the angular velocity. We have a different angular velocity now, 2 pi radians in one day. And again, the conversion table can give you provide you with the number of seconds in a day. Or go ahead and take 24 hours times uh, 3,600 seconds in an hour. But 2 pi divided by the number of seconds in one day, and we find 7.27 times 10 to the minus 5 radians per second. And you can see that's faster. The omega is faster for our spin compared to going around the sun in orbit. That's, that's true. The Earth completes 2 pi radians in one day. 
when it spins, it completes two pi radians in one year when it goes around the sun. So our omega is larger. What about the eye? Well, our Earth will treat it as a sphere. It's not truly a sphere, but uh, close enough. It has a radius 6.376 times 10 to the 6 meters. And the formula for calculating rotational inertia for a sphere, where the axis of rotation goes through the center of the sphere, 2 fifths mr squared, 2 fifths the mass of the Earth and radius of the Earth squared. So we calculate that, and here I'm showing the square on the r, as uh, I should have had above. I get 9.71 times 10 to the 37th kilograms. And to find the angular momentum then, we multiply those together. And I get 9.7 times 10 to the 37th, the i value, times 7.27 times 10 to the minus 5 radians per second, the omega. And we get 7.07 .07 times 10 to the 33rd kilograms meter squared per second. You'll notice that this angular momentum is smaller than the angular momentum for the Earth going in its orbit around the sun. The basic reason for that is r is much larger. And the r is squared. Uh, its importance on the uh, uh, calculating ang the angular momentum and the rotational inertia is where the square comes in. Uh, r is squared, so the fact that our orbit has a large value for r compared to the radius of the Earth, that's provided a bigger number for i, you know, 10 to the 47th, compared to spinning on its axis, we had 10 to the 37th. So we have an angular momentum of the Earth spinning on its axis that's smaller, significantly smaller. Most of the angular momentum is uh, in the motion around the Sun. And you could do that for the other planets as well, and it's instructive, even um, important in theories on how the solar system formed. But that's another video, another topic, another class. Keep practicing on angular momentum calculations.